The Local Government News Roundup is brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association. As Victorian councils go to elections later this year, the VLGA is ready to support communities and councils in good governance. A series of workshops has been designed to increase understanding of the local government sector, the work of councils and the role of a councillor. Registrations are being taken now for workshops in May on standing for local government and local women leading change. And member councils should look out for the VLGA's 2024 local government election pre-candidate prospectus available soon. Find out more about how the VLGA can support your council and community during this important time in the local government election cycle. Visit vlga.org.au. Up on the local government news roundup, more asbestos discovered in parks across Melbourne's west calls for an overhaul of the Victorian disaster payment system as councils are left out of pocket. A council to stop issuing building permits while another opts to stay in the aged care space. The New South Wales Council seeking a cash injection from the sale of a host of council properties while another to talk to its community about its serious and ongoing deficit problem. And the Mayor who wants council rangers to be able to arrest crime suspects. That's all ahead on the Local Government News Roundup. Hello, I'm Chris Eddy, back with another curated selection of news from and about councils across Australia and beyond. The program is brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association, the national broadcaster on all things local government, with support from Davidson, the nationally recognised local government recruitment and business advisory service. More asbestos contamination has been found in parks in Melbourne's west. Four parks in Hobson's Bay have now been found to contain asbestos-contaminated mulch, leading to closures and investigations by the Council and the EPA. Sections of Croft Reserve, Hoskin Reserve and Lynch Reserve in Altona North have now been closed following the first discovery last week at Donald McLean Reserve in Spotswood. In the latest development, The Age is reporting that the EPA is testing for potential asbestos at the P.A. Burns Reserve Dog Park after a report from the community. The EPA reportedly believes the contamination may have originated from commercial and industrial waste that was not properly treated before demolition. It has now issued remedial notices to Hobson's Bay City Council and is requiring the council to inspect all council-managed parks and gardens that have received mulch in the past 18 months and to provide a list of all mulch suppliers. It was also reported at the weekend that the EPA is investigating asbestos found in soil at two parks in the Merribeck Council area. The state opposition is calling for the establishment of an asbestos task force similar to one now operating in New South Wales to prevent further contamination and ensure public safety. Hobson's Bay City Council is providing regular updates on its website about the issue and says it's working with a material hygienist and the EPA to conduct remediation works on all the affected sites. Still in Hobson's Bay and the council has announced a pause on enforcement actions at Techno Park while it reviews its legal obligations and the best way forward following changes to state planning rules about existing use rights. In an open letter published on its website, the council has emphasised the availability of cross-organisational support for residents, including housing and community services. It also says it's currently reviewing the implications of Ministerial Amendment VC 254 which has significantly changed state planning provisions with regard to existing use rights. There are calls for an overhaul of Victoria's disaster payment system as some councils are still grappling with outstanding repairs from flood damage that occurred 18 months ago. In Pyrenees Shire, which has been affected by both flooding and bushfires, the council is still awaiting millions of dollars in disaster recovery funding. 
ABC News reports that the slow assessment process for funding claims has resulted in significant financial challenges, with many councils left out of pocket, unable to complete repair works and further strained by the need to deal with damages from recent bushfire incidents. The MAV has raised concerns about the efficiency of the current system. Association President David Clark described the disaster recovery funding claim process as laborious for councils and has suggested that the system may need an overhaul. He specifically identified the approvals process at the state level as a weakness in the system. In the case of Pyrenees, nine claims have been made, but only one has been officially approved so far. Adding to the financial strain, the recent bushfires have prompted councils to go through the claim process again for the new damages. Ghana Warrishire Council has decided to permanently stop issuing building permits for all major projects. The decision follows a suspension and review of the council's building department services. The council will now seek approval from the Minister for Planning to cease the service. It says existing permits under the council's management will continue to be processed with minimal delays and that its decision will not affect its statutory building functions. Greater Dandenong City Council has affirmed its commitment to continuing providing its current range of aged care and disability services, despite the significant changes coming under the Commonwealth Government's aged care reforms. A change to the staging of the reforms means the council services won't transition to the model until 2027, removing the urgency from a decision about whether the council should exit some services or adapt and participate in the Support at Home program. The Council says it will monitor the development of the local competitive market of alternative service providers and it's considering seeking approval as a provider under the competitive market-based Support at Home program. The Nile Banyul Geelong Convention and Event Centre has begun above-ground works, described by Mayor Trent Sullivan as a significant step in a project aimed at economic growth and prosperity. The project is part of the Geelong City Deal partnership with the Victorian and Australian governments and also signifies a milestone for local trainees and apprentices involved in an early engagement social procurement program. The program provides training and qualifications to local job seekers facing employment barriers. The EPA and Macedon Rangers Shire Council are warning local construction businesses of surprise inspections to ensure safety, environmental and building compliance. The focus will be on construction site management, including dust control, sediment runoff and waffle pod containment. The council will also ensure compliance with local laws, including secure site fencing, refuse and sanitary facilities and asset protection measures. The EPA has recently fined companies for environmental harm and aims to increase awareness of environmental laws in the construction and demolition industry. Briefly in other news, a count back to fill a vacancy in Buckley Ward on Mooney Valley City Council due to the resignation of Councillor Cam Nation will be held online at 10am on Monday the 29th of April. The VEC will redistribute votes from the 2020 election to eligible unsuccessful candidates. Hume City Council is developing strategies to address food security barriers with input from community members and experts at a recent Hume Food Forum. The forum, which included representatives from various sectors, discussed the need for equitable, culturally responsive, healthier and more sustainable food systems. The City of Melbourne has implemented 24-7 cleaning and graffiti removal, reducing response times to one hour and monitoring graffiti hotspots daily. The Council has doubled its investment in clean city services, spending $97 million between 2021 and 2024. Nillimbik Shire Council will host Sustainable House Day, the Nillimbik Trail, later this month, where residents with sustainable homes open their doors to the public. The event, run by Clean Energy Nillimbik and supported by the Council, showcases homes with a minimum of four sustainable features, such as insulation, double glazing, energy efficient appliances and solar panels. And a candidate training program designed to equip women with campaigning knowledge will hold upcoming sessions in Bendigo, Sale and Melbourne. The free in-person events run for six hours and aim to provide potential candidates with the tools and techniques to run for office. Find out more from the link in our show notes. This is the Local Government News Roundup for Monday the 8th of April 2024. It's episode number 320 and it's brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association, the national broadcaster on all things local government, with support from Davidson, nationally recognised recruitment and business advisory services for local government.
More local government news from around the nation and Shoalhaven City Council in New South Wales is set to consider a list of council-owned properties suitable for sale as an update to its land sale strategy. The move is part of the council's financial sustainability strategy and aims to provide a cash injection to the current budget. The council manages over 3,000 lots with 1,700 classified as operational and thus sellable. Nine properties are to be considered for immediate sale with 15 others to be further investigated for potential rezoning or reclassification to enable sale. Professional property valuers will conduct land valuations and independent real estate agents will manage the property sales. Meanwhile, the Council has announced that it is implementing a zero-tolerance approach to behaviours that risk workers' psychological health. The Council has established measures to reduce or eliminate risks causing psychological stress, such as abuse, violence, aggression, bullying or harassment from the public. Council meeting practices now include a preface about respectful behaviour and workers are supported to remove themselves from escalating confrontations. Euro Bedala Shire Council will host a series of community sessions this month to discuss its serious and ongoing deficit. The Council's General Manager Warwick Wynne and Finance Director Stephanie Speedy will lead the sessions to explain the Council's financial situation and the steps being taken to address it. The Council has been working to stabilise its budgets and find a path to financial sustainability, including using grant funds to support existing works and services and conducting an internal budget reset. The Council is also urging its residents not to misuse green waste disposal, reporting an average of three contaminated truckloads weekly and significant illegal dumping in bushland. The Council says this type of green pollution leads to environmental damage and increased processing costs. It has a plan to audit residents' bins' contents to understand contamination rates better and to enhance community education on the issue. Kiama Mayor Neil Riley has returned to work after a month's leave, thanking Deputy Mayor Imogene Dracima for her service during his absence. Mayor Riley took the break to deal with a recurring health issue. He says his return coincides with preparation for some significant developments for the Council, including the Blue Haven divestment, mid-year budgets and upcoming local government elections and a mayoral referendum. The dust has settled from the recent Queensland Council elections, which resulted in significant turnover across the councils of south-east Queensland. The Brisbane Times has published a wrap-up which shows that one-third of roles at the region's 11 councils have changed hands. In Brisbane, three of City Hall's 26 ward seats changed hands, with re-elected Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner's LNP losing one each to the Labor opposition and the Greens. However, the LNP won the Wynnum Manley ward back from Labor for the first time in seven decades. The results will see the LNP's two-decade hold on City Hall reduced by one seat from the 2020 vote. Elsewhere, five mayors retired, bringing new faces to the position in places like Sunshine Coast and Noosa. The mayors of Gold Coast, Ipswich, Lockyer Valley, Moreton Bay and Toowoomba were all returned, while the mayor of Scenic Rim was defeated. 36 of the 100 regular councillor roles across the region changed hands. Council parking fines over the Easter long weekend are in the media spotlight today. Gold Coast Council issued nearly 2,000 parking fines, totalling over $200,000, according to the Gold Coast Bulletin. It says the fines are some of the most expensive in Queensland and were for offences including overstaying the metre, parking on nature strips and parking on yellow lines. The fines have come in for criticism with suggestions that they are a way to capitalise on families gathering for the holiday to raise revenue. The Local Government Association of Tasmania has opposed a recommendation for community votes on council amalgamations, arguing it could lead to conflict between councils with different views on a merger. The position was outlined in the association's response to the final report by the Local Government Review Board on the future of the sector in the state. The advocate reported that while the association supports voluntary amalgamations, it rejects the idea of a formal proposal put to a community vote following a successful elector poll. A survey revealed that 57% of Tasmanians believe the state has too many councils and 14% feel the population or state size cannot sustain the current number of councils. In South Australia, the decision by regional airline Rex to withdraw from Wyala following a dispute over costs has led to the entire council being declared unsustainable by the state's economic regulator. 
Australian Aviation has reported that the airport's poor performance is the main factor behind the council's debt, which is expected to result in a loss of $5 million between 2023-24 and 2032-33. Conflict between the Council and Rex arose after the Federal Government stopped funding security screening operations, causing Wyala to pass on those costs to the airlines. Mayor Phil Stone is now calling for a national levy to distribute the costs more fairly. And the Mayor of WA's town of Claremont, Jock Barker, has proposed the retraining of local government rangers and greater powers for them to act as a local police force in response to increasing petty crime and antisocial behaviour. The idea comes amid reports from local shopkeepers about rising crime rates and frustration about an inability to reduce and combat crime. ABC News reported that under Mayor Barker's plan, local government rangers would be given the power to arrest suspects. He told the ABC he'd not spoken to police about the idea and he suspected they would not be supportive. Briefly in other news, Willoughby City Council's first reconciliation action plan has been endorsed by Reconciliation Australia, marking the start of its implementation. The plan, developed through a year-long consultation process with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, aims to strengthen relationships and promote reconciliation. Rebecca von Hoff has been unanimously re-elected as the Deputy Mayor for Toowoomba Regional Council. The election was conducted at the Council's post-election meeting last week. Councillor von Hoff was first appointed to the Deputy Mayoralty in July last year. And the City of Mount Gambier is seeking expressions of interest for the Mount Gambier Beacon Art Project, inviting emerging, mid-career and established artists to submit a design proposal for a public artwork. The project aims to capture the unique combination of landscape, people and history that forms Mount Gambier's identity. The deadline for submissions is 5pm on the 30th of April. A reminder that you can find the links to all of the stories that are referenced in the Local Government News Roundup on our website at lgnewsroundup.com. You'll find some breaking news stories there too on occasion. Head there to find out more about the program and how you can support the show by becoming a subscriber for a small monthly fee, which you can cancel at any time. Now for the international spotlight with some stories today out of New Zealand, the USA and firstly the UK. Four individuals have been arrested and released on bail for allegedly spraying red paint on a council headquarters due to its links to an Israeli arms firm. The suspects, two men and two women of varying ages, were also suspected of locking on to a person during a protest. BBC News reported that the council building located in Taunton has been the site of a second protest by Palestine Action in recent weeks. Cumberland Council has announced the passing of Councillor Cyril Webber, a Labour member for the council's Harrowby North Ward. Councillor Webber had a 40-year career in local politics, serving on the Carlisle City Council, Cumbria County Council and Cumberland Council. He was also Mayor of Carlisle from 1988 to 89. Councillor Webber is remembered for his passion and dedication to improving the lives of people in Carlisle and the wider area. Valet. Councillor Cyril Webber. Despite a petition signed by over 7,000 people, the weed killer glyphosate will be used again in Brighton and Hove. The City Council had previously stopped using glyphosate in 2019, but rampant weed growth has led to its reintroduction. BBC News reported that the Council plans to use a controlled droplet approach to target individual weeds and that it will consider phasing the chemical out in future once the weed growth problem is under control. Aberdeen City Council has proposed new rules for buskers, including a prohibition on songs containing hate speech. The rules, developed in response to complaints about noise and the duration of performances, also propose designated busking zones, volume and duration limits and a performance window between 10am and 8pm. The National reported that members of the public are being encouraged to share their views on the proposals. Also worth a read this week is an extended piece from The Guardian on the council tax system in England and calls for an overhaul. Council taxes are still set based on property values from 1991 and they don't take into account changes to average house prices in the time since. It's been described as a turbocharger of inequality. 
In New Zealand, Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown has announced an additional $570,000 in funding for city safety schemes, including more CCTV operators and three pilot safety coordination hubs. The funding has been welcomed by employers, particularly those experiencing high rates of theft in downtown stores. The Auckland Council's City Watch team will also be expanded. Despite the funding boost, Radio New Zealand reported there are continued calls for the reopening of a downtown police station, which was closed in 2013. Finally, to the US, New York City will make 53 streets car-free for Earth Day, the largest event of its kind to date. The event, which encourages sustainable modes of transportation, will last from 10am to 4pm on the 20th of April. The Gothamist has reported on the plans with the Department of Transportation to host performances and art installations on some of the closed streets, while City Bike will offer free 30-minute rentals during the event. And there's a solar eclipse about to occur in the US. It's being tipped to be a major travel event with as many as 4 million people journeying to view it. The eclipse will be visible across a large part of the country and is expected to last longer than the one in 2017. Numerous cities across the country are preparing for a surge in visitation with around $1 billion in revenue expected to be generated, described as equivalent to having 50 Super Bowls. Vox reported that Eclipse chasers, who are drawn to the rarity and communal experience of such phenomena, will be a major contributor to the surge in tourism. While North Americans prepare to observe this rare event, Australians will have to wait until July the 22nd, 2028, for our next opportunity to witness such an event. And that's our podcast for today. This edition recorded the 8th of April 2024 and brought to you as always by the Victorian Local Governance Association with support from Davidson. You can find the links to the stories referenced in the episode and a full transcript at www.lgnewsroundup.com. The Local Government News Roundup is recorded in the city of Greater Geelong, Victoria, on the land of the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation. I'll be back with more Local Government News soon. Until next time, thanks for listening and bye for now. Local Government News Roundup is proudly supported by Davidson. For 30 years, Davidson has been strengthening the local government sector by identifying and providing the people, expertise and experience that local government needs to enhance its capability, productivity and performance. Davidson is nationally recognised for its executive recruitment services and over the past four years has built a business advisory practice rapidly evolving into one of the nation's foremost and trusted local government business consultancy firms. The Davidson methodology and approach is simple. Thinking beyond now and aiming to be a valued partner with your local government, not just for the immediate project, but for the next 30 years. Speak to Justin Hanney or Seamus Scanlon to find out more or head to davidsonwp.com.au. Davidson, your future, your partner.